All right, well, um, thank you for being here. Um, I'm here to give you an update on the situation as I know it at this point. I think it's very important for you to understand that this investigation is going to be long and contracted um, before we get to the bottom of everything associated with it. Uh, but it's one of the things I wanted to update you with is we have located the vehicles that I had put out in the first briefing, and we believe we were uh, confident, but not 100% sure we have located the female person of interest. Uh, so I want the people to feel confident and calm in that aspect that we've uh, accomplished a lot in a short period of time. Now, the number of injuries, I do not know yet, um, but we are looking in an excess of 50 uh, individuals dead and over 200 individuals injured at this point. I do not want to give you an accurate number and it be wrong. Uh, so subsequently, um, that is why I'm portraying it in that um, manner. Now the suspect, uh, I am going to provide you his identity at this point. His name is Stephen Paddock. Um, last name spelled P-A-D-D-O-C-K uh, with the date of birth of 4-9 of 1953. Um, as far as his, as his history and background, uh, we haven't completed that part of the investigation yet, uh, but we located numerous firearms within the room that he occupied. And that's like I uh, stated earlier, it's gonna be a long and tedious um, investigation. Now we're bringing in all the resources of the FBI to assist us in this investigation, um, in particular to their victim witness advocates and their CSI folks to help us process the scene and ensure that we're getting all the evidence that we can possibly uh, uh, obtain. Now, furthermore, I want to provide you the phone number that I said I would provide in the first briefing. That number for family and friends uh, to get an update on loved ones is 1-866-535-5673. One more time, 1-866-535-5654. Um, obviously, this is a tragic incident and one that we've never experienced in this valley. Um, so what we're gonna try to do is the best we can to get our first responders back on their feet and responding and conducting a proper investigation and ensure that we have the safety of this community at heart. Um, my condolences go out to the loved ones uh, that lost their lives and their families, and we will do the best we can to make it as easy as possible for you, for you to get information as we know it. Um, I think it's important for you to see the FBI, um, County Fire, and Commissioner Sislak to behind me. Uh, it shows that we have full support of all the government entities um, to solve this situation as soon as possible. No, not yet. How many law enforcement officers are walking around? I don't know yet. Because there's a, a, there's some uh, officers from other jurisdictions that was attending the concert. Uh, so I don't have an accurate number of that yet. Have you gotten an update on your officers that have been injured? <clears throat> one was critical, but he's stable. And one of my officers was off duty attending the concert and lost his life. No, I don't have any more details on the firearms. All we know is they, they were rifles, and that's all I know at this point. Uh, we're executing a search warrant on the room as we speak. Sir, how are you doing? You know, your guys that were on the room, how are you handling We're holding up, and we're going to do the best we can. Uh, and I don't want to say that's what we're paid to do, It's because uh, nobody's paid to do what we're experiencing right now. Uh, but the, in my preview of the police department, they're doing a fantastic job and we're gonna to have to look out for their well-being moving forward. You said there were numerous other firearms found in Stephen Paddock's room. Was that in his home or was that in the room? In the room, in the room of the hotel. Uh, we have officers at his uh, residence. Uh, and we'll be executing his search warrant there also shortly. That's a hard question to answer at this point. 
um, it's too early in the process and please give us time so we can do a good job. Thank you and I would provide you an update on a regular basis at approximately a two hour window at a time. Uh, as you can imagine, we don't get a lot of information all at once. Uh, so please bear with us when I provide you information. <clears throat> the phone number that provided, um, we will get that uh, information out. But right now, um, we, you know, I'm not comfortable providing that information because we're overwhelmed in the medical services at all the hospitals right now. Um, but the United Blood Services has responded. And then once they get all their personnel on the ground and more people in place, we'll be able to provide that info. So this is for people looking for their loved ones. Looking for their loved ones. Yes, ma'am. Uh, there's two locations where they have been responding. One is at the uh, South Central Area Command, which is in close proximity to the Mandalay Bay, and then also here. Preferably, we would like them to come to police headquarters on Martin Luther King, uh, so they're not inundated with uh, people responding in that area. And the families that you're seeing coming, what, what kind of emotions are they going through? All right, thank you very much. Have a good night.